Hey, listen, people. Yeah, children of God, um, what a day. Listen, we went to this station um, in Shinford to preach the gospel news of Jesus Christ. And there were some mourners there who came over there to, to drink in the pub because they were kind of like uh, having celebration for the death of their, of their friend. But guess what? We are there to do the work of God. You see? The word of God and the work of Jesus Christ, the preaching of the good news of Jesus Christ can never be stopped by nobody. Amen? Christ died for my sin. Christ died for your sin. They were there to celebrate the dead. And we are there to preach life unto them. And because they are used to not listen to the word of God before. Most of them never hear about Jesus Christ. Listen, evangelism, it is the key. You see? You must do evangelism work, okay? Because some people never hear about the gospel of Jesus Christ. You see? You see the music playing now? It says, one day every day we bow that Jesus Christ is the Lord. To so glory to the God the Father in heaven. Jesus Christ died for my sin, died for your sin. And that is why we have salvation. Amen. Even though they're there to bury their friend, guess what? Guess what Jesus Christ said? The man that came over to him said, Let me go and bury my father. What did Christ said to him? Let the dead bury themselves. Amen. So we know that the dead can never please God because they are dead already. You see? That's why the Bible said in the book of James, chapter 4, verse 23, it said what? Body without spirit is what? It is dead. You see? The Bible says what? After death comes judgment. Amen? So we are there to preach the gospel need of Jesus Christ. Preaching to them about, about sin, about how God died for them, about everything. Okay? We sh I choose a place to preach to them about self-control. To preach to them about self-control. It is not a coincidence. That we when they will meet the people, we are people that we are out of control. You see, let's talk about self-control for a moment. Self-control means you think seriously before you act. Because whatever thing that you do after that, you have to bear the consequences. Amen. Most people these days they don't think, they just act. And you got these guys. Them, I would say in that pub, maybe as experienced working in the nightclub and pub before, I would say they have close to 100 and plus people there in just that tiny pub. Amen? They're close everywhere then, telling us to do social, social distancing. But they're not telling these people in the pub, drinking to do social distances from their sin. And these guys came over, they destroy the church property, they destroy the mic. They push me, because as a child of God, I didn't push back. If it was before, if he pushed me, lack of knowledge and wisdom, I could have just pushed you back and then we can have a proper fight. But as a child of God, we don't fight a fiscal fight. Our The battle belongs to the Lord, you see? So devil tested us. We pray before going to this place to evangelize in this station. Guess what? God fight my battle and your battle. As a child of God, you should never get into physical fight. The Bible says when someone slap you here, you should turn to that sheep. Amen. And that's the difference between us and for those who don't know God. You see, the Bible says what? If someone wants to go with you one mile, don't go to one mile with the person, go two miles. If someone wants to take your, your clock, give him your tonic as well. So, what my point I'm trying to make here is this: when you give your life to God, there must be a change in your life. Amen. I'm talking with you from experience. If it was before, if I don't have the spirit of God living in me, we could have just it could have gone both ways because I was a very stubborn person. If you push me, I'll push you back. If you want to have a go, have a go. Whether win or lose, it doesn't matter. I'm all for it. You see? But now I am not doing that anymore. I rebuke that spirit in the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. I'm a child of God. I have given my life to God. There's no way I will continue living in sin, you see? Because these four guys pushing us, pushing my sister, my pastor was there, the wife, sister Leah, sister Liva, we we're all there preaching the gospel news. Guess what? We didn't push back, we didn't fight back because we are the children of God. When you give your life to God, 
there must be a change in your life. Amen? So there's no wonder that I control myself. It was not me. It was the Spirit of God was controlling me. But one thing for sure, the Spirit of God tell me, continue preaching. I know my pastor was telling me to stop. Everyone was telling me, but the Spirit of God was telling me, I have to be led by the Spirit. You see? You know when they just Christ said the parable about sowing seed on the ground? There's some seed that fell in the good soil. Those seed, the Bible said what? They multiply from 164 and to more. So that means that seed grow. There was the seed that fell on the rocking ground. They couldn't grow because the birds came and obviously took away the seed. Those are the devil, you see? What point am I trying to make here? There's some seed that ro rose on the, on the soil. Well, guess what? They didn't have enough root. They didn't have enough soil, which is the word of God, to make them grow nicely. And they got shocked up. So, when we go to do evangelism, we are sowing seed. Okay? That seed is the word of God. And that word of God never returned by void. I mean, the word of God never returned by God. Okay? The Bible says he sent his word. Guess what? You always go and manifest what that word that was meant to go and do. Just as God said, rain, the rain always go and water the land so that the sower and eaters will have something to eat. So the Bible says, as far as there is earth, there must be season time. The season time will never cease. That means the rain season, the winter, the autumn, the spring will never cease. So as a child of God, you should never cease preaching the gospel news of Jesus Christ, even to the point of death. Amen? So we continue preaching. I didn't stop because I have to be led by spirit. Um, my my sister called police and the station that we were preaching outside of school called the police. When police arrived, so pastor was also asking them, are we allowed to preach here by law? They say yes, so that means they cannot stop us from preaching. I said yes, okay. So we discussed to them what happened. Who have video record about the things they did, how they destroy God property. But guess what? God is the vengeance. You can never invent for God. He pains me to see people try to fight for God. We can do that. As a child of God, God is bigger enough to fight his own battle. The Bible says what well, the battle belongs to the Lord, the victory belongs to his children. Amen. So we didn't we didn't engage with them what they wanted to. They never wanted us to to kind of way to push them back and then let them be fight, let them be let them be quarrel, and devil will take control. You see. So we didn't let that that happen because the spirit of God was with us. You know, before we started, we prayed. You know, so it's always good to commit your ways to God and do not lean to your own understanding. Amen. So this conversation that I'm having with you is this. It's a learning process. You see, as you are growing with your faith with the Lord, you can never know everything. You see, you make, you make mistakes, then you learn. But one thing I promise myself in this my walk with the Lord, I am not afraid to make mistakes. Do you understand this? I'm not afraid to make mistakes because at the end of the day, if you don't make a mistake, you can never learn. You see, look at all the whole powerful man of God. They all make mistake. Moses was a mother that he killed somebody, and then God still used him. Apostle Paul was similar thing. He did all this thing. Guess what? God still used him. What am I trying to make is this? Peter denied Christ three times. God still used him and still tell him upon your name, upon this name, Peter. I will meet my church and get to break and never pray back. You see? So what is my point here is this. It is a narrow way. It is a narrow road. You're going to have some tough days. You're going to have some quiet days. But guess what? All day belongs to the Lord. Amen? So I was not moved by this. Because the Bible says in the book of 2 Timothy chapter 1, verse 7, He said, God have not given all the spirit of fear. For spirit of what? love, sound mind, and self-control. Amen? 
So it's not a coincidence that I, I wanted to preach about self-control today and that all these things happen. You see? My faith was tested. You see? So if your test, if you pass every battle in your Christian life, your work with God, you have a crown. Each battle you won, you have a crown. And tomorrow and the next time, there are always going to be a battle. Amen? So no one thing for sure. Christianity is not about eating and drinking. The Bible said it plainly. It said the kingdom of God is not about eating and drinking. But it's what? Love, peace, and joy in the Holy Spirit. Amen? And that's what God gives, gives, gives me and gives you also in your life. Amen? So we have so a seed today. It doesn't look like you have been so a seed. It doesn't matter because, excuse me, every seed that you sow is God. Amen? Remember the book of Corinthians when Apostle Paul was sent to the church in Corinthians? Why are they fighting? This one said, I will follow Paul, I will follow, I will follow Apollos. Is Christ divided? No. Christ is not divided. Amen? My point I'm trying to say is this. If you saw a seed, Apostle Paul saw a seed, Apollos water, well, guess who gives the growth? Jesus Christ. Amen. Jesus Christ gives the growth. You see? So we saw a powerful seed today. You know? And I know every seed that goes on ground, God is going to give the growth. Amen? We sang, we preached. They can see how united we are. That is the key point. They see how united we are. We are not intimidated by them. That's why the Bible says, Show them who you are in Christ Jesus Christ. But they see that you are not intimidated by them. I think the book of Timothy, first Timothy, Apostle Paul was telling Timothy, Guess what? Have the same mind in Christ. Amen. Remain strong on what you believe. Remain faithful to God. Don't let people push you around. Amen. You see, I am growing in my work with the Lord. And I hope you too grow in as well. Amen. What I mean by growing is this. Every single day, there will be challenges. Whether, it doesn't matter whether with your wife, with your husband, with your children, even with your church, even with your school, with your place of work, with your neighbors. Guess what? God is always there to give you victory. The question that you need to ask yourself, are you praying? When you pray, do you believe the word of God? You see? This thing happened to me is nothing because all the apostles, look at what they did to them. Apostle Paul with all this wonderful message that me and you enjoy today, the richness that is in the word of God. Guess what? He was beheaded. John the Baptist was also beheaded for telling Herod for taking his brother's wife to the you see and the letter beheaded him. Do you know how we see John the Baptist? See what Christ says about John the Baptist. He see him totally different. He said there was not any man that had been born of woman better and higher than John the Baptist. But he was beheaded. You see? So when I came to Christ, and especially this year, I say what? I am ready to do the gospel. I am ready to go and preach the good news. I know that Christ has fortified me. Listen, people, I am not afraid to die. The child of God, you want to go to heaven? You don't want to die? Ask yourself, how long do you think you have to live in this life? Let's say you have 100 years to live. And then what happened? You're still going to die. Lazarus was roasted from, roasted from, from death after four days. Guess what happened? Lazarus still let her die. Everyone that was roasted from death, they all went back to grave. Guess who died and came back to life? Jesus Christ. And that is why Apostle Paul said, I am not afraid to preach the gospel need of Jesus Christ. Because to live is for Christ and to die is it is gain. When I die, it is an upgrade. You see? I'm not looking forward for that day. 
if you are a child of God, you are afraid to die. You don't have Christ living in you. Because, guess what? You know when Christ said, carry your cross. Do you know why Peter restated him and put him aside, started rebuking him? When he had the war cross those days, not like as where you know it today. There's no anybody that goes to a cross that comes back. You've been crucified, two hands on the wood, two legs joined together and being nailed at, being mocked at, being whipped at. See? And that is why Peter know why, and that is why he put Christ on his side. He was telling Christ, why are you telling us that you're going to go and die? Even though he's still telling that he's going to resurrect on the third day. Everybody knows that nobody have died and resurrected back again. And that is why Peter was at, at him because he was in flesh. You see? What am I saying this? Last year in my life, two years before, I could have said, okay, I don't want to die. But if you know who you are in Christ Jesus Christ, you are, have to be willing to die for what you believe in. If you are not willing to do that, you are still what? In the world. I was doing the Bible, Bible study with my student two days ago. And we'll come across about Christ predicting his death. And the Spirit of God tell me to tell my student the same thing. I tell, I tell my daughter, my son, listen, when I die, I don't want you to cry. Because if I haven't given my life to Christ two years ago, you should have cried because your daddy didn't know where he's going. My daughter feels so sad. But guess what? That the same way the disciples feel. But I had the Spirit of God to explain to my children that a death, death is an appointment that me and you cannot miss. So whether you like it or not, time out will come. Everybody have expiring dates. Just as you go to the shop, you buy things. You have expiring dates. This, this, rub, this rubbish body you see, have expiring debt and when I die the Bible says what well, dust you are and dust you go naked you okay? and naked you go because I didn't bring anything when I come have you ever have you seen anyone coming to the world bringing things with them they came nakedness and that is the way Christ created me and you so as for that I'm gonna preach about that you see I was meant to do it today but Spirit of God directed me to, to do self-control you see? Because, can you imagine I was dead today preaching to them about death and they are doing this death funeral and they are drinking. But I was there to preach about self-control because I know some of them going to need it. You see? So, when you give your life to God, you need to prepare your barrier. Do you understand my point? When you give your life to God, you must prepare your barrier. If you do not prepare your barrier, you are staying in the world. Because that's the whole point. When you do water baptism, what do you do? You go into the water, you die with Christ, and you rest there again. The Bible says what? You are a new creation. So that means everything that Christ has in this life belongs to you. That means also his death. So that means you are going to die. I'm going to die. One day. And the Bible says what? After that comes what? Judgment. So now that you are living, that I'm living, you have every time to repent. And that is why I was praying to them. Repent because a day will come. They are going to die one day. No matter how big you think you are. Take all the whole crazy people that came into this life. They all died. Hitler died. They all wanted to be God. Apollos, they all died. Uh, Mo from the China, he died. Stalin for the Russia, he died. All these crazy people, they all come and go. Because that is all what we have in common. That is an appointment that you cannot miss. And because if you cannot miss that appointment, the Bible tells me and you, in the book of Timo, uh, First Peter, I said, well, what kind of people that we should be? We should be the people that should do what? Living a holy life. Amen? And that is why... You need to change your mindset. 
today, not tomorrow. Now, change your mindset. I need to change my mindset. We all need to change our mindset. Amen. The Bible says what? Have the mind of Christ. Amen. So that you can do what? Live. You see? Live means as you are living, you're living for Christ. And when you die, you die into Christ. You see? And that is why I said, we should not God. We shouldn't be afraid of death. Amen. And I hope you understand this message. I know it's a driving conversation, but it's the word of God that you are hearing coming from my mouth. I don't speak of my own. When I own life, when I start speaking, God is taking absolute control. The word of God starts flowing. The Bible says what? Once you open your mouth, it will fill you in the book of Psalm. You see? So that word of God that we went and preached today, is going to touch their heart. They're going to look back at some point in life and someone going to preach to them about Jesus Christ. They will understand the message, you see? Because the society that we're living here, in London, especially in UK, probably all over the world, the society have gone to the left. They sort of gone to the right side of God, you see? So the self-control is what you think, seriously, what are you going to do before you add if that is going to benefit you spiritually if that's going to benefit you physically or if that is going to benefit you financially before you enter into anything amen? and that is why the bible encourages us not to live by our own understanding but the bible says what commit your ways to god amen cast your cares unto god because he cares for you you see so whatever happened in my life now people as i'm sharing my life with you guys every day daily sharing the word of god twice once a day you see my progress and i hope i want to see progress in your life because what's the point of preaching you are hearing the word of god and you are still the same no you must produce good fruit you must produce good fruit and those good fruit are what joy peace love patient goodness kindness faithfulness self-control if you like any of this the bible said what ask the holy spirit he will guide you holy spirit is my is my gps amen it enables me he teaches me, he says, teacher, he directs me, lead me to the places that I need to go. Amen. Sometimes he can lead you to the dead end. Guess what? For the name of God to be glorified. You see? Holy Spirit have led all the man of God to the dead point. He lead St. Stephen. He was stoned to death. But guess what? Christ stand up for him. Just as I said, John the Baptist was beheaded. Peter was beheaded. Isaiah was saw into two. Isaiah was saw into two from the head, starting from the starting from the middle of his leg to his head. He was put upside down. They saw him. Okay. So you today, you have this gospel. People die for it, and then you are not listening to the word of God. You are doing your own thing. You are not obeying God. I used to be that, but the Bible says what? My people perish because of what? Lack of wisdom. You see? So my point here, I'm just getting, I'm just arrived to my home. It was a good long and good conversation we have together. So my point is this. Try to pack up. My point is this. When you come to God, you hear the word of God must change amen you might be a baby christian every day no you be on pampas no that's things yeah that's yucky amen? you need to grow as a child of god in your work with god if you don't grow that means you are what you are staying in the world amen and i hope you you, you understand this message jesus christ the miss is singing now. Just Christ is the Lamb of God. And that Lamb in the book of Revelation chapter 5, 
chapter 6 verse 5 that lamp is still bleeding today if you confess your sins he's faithful and just to forgive you in the mighty name of Jesus amen so fear not death death have no power over you God has given me and you what? the spirit of what boldness love sound mind go and read 2 Timothy chapter 1 verse 7 God have not given you a spirit of timidity spirit of fear no it's a spirit of love because you love God you obey his commandment give you the spirit of sound mind because nobody can move you around you have sound mind you know what you believe people call you cross man third and great but you know what you believe spirit of self-control so you think before you act amen? and i hope you get this wisdom coming out from my coming out from my mouth through the word of god you hear the message it is loud and clear amen don't be afraid of nobody fear nobody only do what fear god for the fear of god is beginning of his wisdom and then you grow from there amen remain blessed in the mighty name of jesus listen to this music this is what i do this day attention Jesus, my Savior, there is none like you. God, all of this, I want to praise the wonders of your mighty work. My James, God, my Savior, God, I must love my level. Every breath, all I have heard, never cease to worship you. Shout to the Lord of the earth, never cease. Listen, it's good serving God. If you don't have joy serving God, you are in the wrong place. Amen. The joy of the Lord, the joy of salvation, it is my strength in the mighty name of Jesus. And nobody can take it away. No devil, nobody, nobody, not my wife, not my children, not my, not my, not my boss, nobody. The joy of the Lord is my strength, is my salvation. That joy surpasses anything that you can get. You can get it in sex, you can get it in drink, you can get it in money, you can get it anything. Do you know why? Because God beat us that way for us to be missing one thing in our life. Without Him, you are empty. You need God to be full. Amen. Remember, bless in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. My Savior, God, there is none like you. God of my days, I want to praise. The wonders of your mighty love. My dear thought, my shelter, time and this place into prayer. Heaven and great, all I have learned, never cease to worship you. Shout to the Lord, all the earth never sings. God bless you people. Remember, blessed in the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. I'm out.